So that's a par four, dog leg to the right, and ah, it's a beautiful shot. Hello everybody, my name is James. This is Golf Peaks, a game that just came out on iPhone and on iPad. It's also out on Steam. This is the winner of our last big indie pitch competition or one of the ones we did this year. It's events that we hold where we get together all the best indie developers from throughout the world and then judge their games and we pick the winners and which ones we find best and unsurprisingly this one is the winner. Now it's taking a turn-based card game and mixing it with a golf game which might not immediately think like they go together but if you think about golf it's kind of turn-based every time you take a shot you have to walk stop and then take another shot so it does fit together and rather than relying on the strength of your swing or in this case how far you drag back on the screen to take the shot it's denoted by the numbers that are on the cards and let me tell you it works lovely it's a puzzle game with a golf aesthetic and it's just such a brilliant thing uh, to, to play because you get very accustomed to playing the same games over and over again at these kind of events, not because they aren't great, but because people have a lot of the same ideas. A lot of inspiration comes from the same wells. So as a result, you think, yeah, this is cool, but I've kind of played it before. Whereas this is one of those ones that seems so simple and obvious. Like, why hasn't this been done before? This is a great idea. I've played a lot of golf games as well on mobile and they generally work you know, pretty solidly on a touch screen. This is something else. So. The cards at the bottom of the screen, you can see this one, for example, will send you three tiles in a given direction. This one will send you two tiles, but it will take off. It will jump into the air like you're whacking it with a with an iron rather than a, a putter. Am I using the right golf terms? I don't know. So I'm going to use this one to hop two tiles across and it will take me to there. Now I've got the ability to jump three tiles in a given direction, which I can do. I'm going to send it over here. It will cross over the putt land at the bottom and then this one if I drive up you see it's going to go past the hole and over the top because it's got three not two tiles of distance and it won't putt it has to land exactly on the right tile so let's undo the last two moves and see what we can do here now, I've already played through all these courses up until about the end of world three there are seven six or seven worlds I think 70 plus courses all of which are handmade so let's try something slightly different here we're going to go with a jumping three to get us over the top bump we're going to hit a three here and we're going to bounce it off of this corner. So one, two, three, and then with the final one, two tiles, bosh, straight in the hole. And that's how it works. Now this is the first world that's been completed. Then we move on to the next world, which has got things like bunkers to deal with. So you get stuck in the sand. You might get stuck in quicksand at some point later on in the game. So they keep throwing different obstacles at you and you've got to work your way around it. So each of these ones will let me jump up one in the air. But as you can see, it'll also roll on one tile when I land. However, this, this is the sand. So I am stuck in here. If I try and take a shot, a normal shot, it won't move. So I need to jump out of it, chip it out, and then get it in the hole with the extra roll. I'll show you how it works here. Because if I just try and use like a three, bosh, it just stops on the same tile it landed on originally. And then I can't get it off. I cannot. The only way to do it is to jump it like that. So the question then becomes, which order do I play these cards in in order to make this work? So we're gonna start off with the two jump. Actually, no, I don't think we will. What we're going to do, mm, we're gonna roll a three and it's gonna get stuck. We're then gonna use the two to clear that one in the middle and land at the end. And then we have a nice clear run down to the hole at the end. Lovely stuff. Very satisfying, this game, because everything slots together neatly. When you play, you feel like you've worked out a solution to a puzzle. You don't feel like you've fluked it by randomly just pressing any direction and any card you want and trying to make it work, because that won't get you very far. So this is going to be tricky. If I can, I can only jump one in any given direction. So for example, I can jump over here. Boop. And this has put me in a dead end, because if I jump one here, the two roll on effect, because it, once it lands, it's supposed to roll an additional two tiles. Can't do that, because I'm stuck in the rough. And this won't get me anywhere. So, how do I unpick this one? Let's try jumping just one tile here onto there. We're then going to try going for two tiles at the end. What I want to be left with is... I throw this one up here, bosh, there we go. 
two jumps and one roll on. I need to be on the tile here. You can see where that cross is. I want to finish there. Actually, no, I don't want to finish there. I'm confusing myself here. So if I go there, that's not going to roll on. And then again, the three won't help me out. So question is, how did I beat this before? <laughs> Let's try the two in that direction, which takes me all the way to the end. We're going to try the, I need one hop, one hop remaining. I know, I know, I know. I need to start out. with the three to take me onto that. That's what I want to do. Then we can hop. I want to save that one hop for the end. If I jump over here, beautiful. And then I can go two and a roll on, but it won't roll on. That leaves me with just that one hop at the end. Bam, there we go, you see? We worked it out. That wasn't random blagging, that was genuine thought and puzzle solving. And now we're faced with this. Let's have a look at the thing right here. So the game itself is $2.99 or £2.99 if you wanted to give it a go. The question I've got here is which one do I save for the end? Because they've all got the ability to jump two tiles, but they have differing roll-ons. This, this has got a two roll-on, this has got a one roll-on, so now I need to know. I think I need the two roll-on at the end, don't I? So I'm going to jump this one over here. And I'm left with this one, and I should be able to jump and bounce off that corner. Oh, no, it's too much. So I need to do it the other way around. So I'll use this one first. And then use this one with the additional roll on of one. There we go. Elimination. We got there in the end. Now we have some quicksand action. So whereas the other obstruction was the sand, standard sand, I could land in it, and it would just get stuck. It wouldn't go anywhere. This one... If I show you, if I land in it, oh no, it rolls like a normal ball would roll. But if I stop on it, it goes and sucks it in and then you lose the ball. So let me show you what happens here. You can see that you've got the angles, the inclines and declines. These work like they would do in real time. But as you can see there, I've landed on the quicksand and my ball is dead. So. I'm going to roll down this side instead, get stuck there, and use a little hop to bring it over. So whilst the sand is an obstruction, it's also a useful thing to stop you at the end of steep rolls. This one is a bit more tricky. He says, trying to remember how the hell he did it the first time. <laughs> so we can only really jump two in any one direction to start off with. That's fine. The other thing I don't think I've shown in the video so far is that you can bounce them off of walls to help you, not just off of corners, but if you've got maybe a two shot, for example, and the hole is one away, you can kind of bounce it off the other wall. You can rebound it in the other direction and that counts as one and then it bounces back 180 degrees and comes over and then you have just the one tile. So for example, if I was to do that, I can get two shots out of that, you see. I don't want to do that because then I will die horribly and that's not good. So I've just got the one card which lets me go in a straight line and the one that lets me jump three so I'm thinking that neither of those things are going to work for me so I can't start with a three because I'll go flying off the end I'll just show you what that looks like Whee. flies off the end and dies obviously you can undo at any point so it's not the end of the world if I choose a two I'm going to fly off the end so it, it has to absolutely has to start with one of these now where can we go from here I can do a three jump all the way over there. I can then try rolling off the back. Ah, hang on. See, what I would want to do is push in that direction. Because I'm in the rough, it won't work. However, if I go this way, two up there, three up here, I've got to play these two cards. So I'm going to use this number two card and go one, two. See what I mean? That's exactly what I was talking about. And then the final card up and over the top and we've sunk it so there you go that's kind of the basics of the game there are like five more worlds with lots of different obstacles to uncover we think it's a really strong game so much so that we awarded it our top prize uh, and i reckon you should give it a look we'll probably have a review over on pocketgamer.com if you want to go and have a look at it but in the meantime this is golf peaks it's out right now thank you for watching see you next time